which means we're going to go ahead and hide this one. We can also hide our line. There we go. Okay, and let's hide point E. We don't need it anymore. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this triangle and we're going to rotate it about point D. So it's as if there was a triangle. I'm sorry, not a triangle, a circle. About D. And what we can do... There we go. And what we'll see is that it's as if this shape gets slid on the circumference of this triangle, or the circle. Uh, too much math in one day. So we want to rotate an object about a point. And let's go ahead, we'll rotate this 45 degrees, and we will rotate it clockwise. And notice what we get. It's as if the object was slid. Let's just change the color, there we go. And let's create another rotation. This time, We'll rotate the same object about the same point. There we go. But we will rotate it. Let's rotate this one 120 degrees. And we'll still go clockwise. Notice it ends up over here. Okay, how about if we take the same shape and we'll rotate it now to be 180 degrees. Hopefully you realize that this shape will end up on the exact opposite side of the circle. We'll make this shape purple. But we can see that no matter where this shape gets put, that we still maintain the same orientation. It's still such that if we were to be able to pick up these triangles, we could stack them one on top of each other. We can't do that with a reflection because we end up with mirror images. Mirror images can't be stacked that way. And we can make the triangles dance. The point is, though, that these are all rotated about the point D. And so they all orbit around that point. Hopefully this makes a little bit more sense of rotations because next we'll be looking at what are called translations. Okay, so first of all we've done a reflection which does give us a flipped orientation. And we've done a rotation about a point. which gives us the same orientation. And lastly, we're going to look at translation.